Hi everybody, we're doing a twofer today. Yes we are. Because there's two of us. And also because I'm going to put this up on my Pins and Needles podcast channel and on the Dave's Gym YouTube channel. Dave of Dave's Gym. Dave of Dave's Gym. It's linked down below, so if you struggle to find it, just, just check the drop down box. I don't know, because Dave and I are sat on an angle, I'm not sure if it's going to struggle to autofocus or maybe it's just Dave's t-shirt baffling the camera. What? It's got eyeballs. Eyeballs. I forgot to get my cup of tea, so you tell the lovely people what we're going to talk about while I go and get a nice cup of tea. Um, we're going to talk about today things that you can use to distract yourself, particularly um, things you can listen to. Uh, so today's going to be about podcasts and audiobooks and things that you can use to entertain yourself whilst either just chilling out or by doing something else. Uh, I use podcasts all the time uh, to distract myself from the mundane of washing up the dishes, tidying up the house. It's a nice little, little distraction. Um, so yeah, today's all about being distracted. This might be a slightly longer than usual podcast. We have a tendency to waffle. That's true. And we have opinions. Mm -hmm. Mine are right. Well, I, you don't know, I don't know what yours are yet, so we'll have to wait and see. Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, so we've got, you've got a top five, haven't you? Ish. Ish. And I've got a one, two, I've not three, counted. four-ish. I've not counted. Um, if this gets too long, I might have to split it in half, but we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Part one and? Possibly part two. Part two. Anyway, what's, what's number one on your list? Um, Are these in order of preference? No. Or is this just five? No, no, things? no. In no particular order. I think I'll start off with ones that are fitness related. So I'm talking about podcasts now. Uh, not books, not audiobooks, but just uh, straight um, podcasts. I obviously live in the fitness industry um, almost 24-7, up until recently. My teeth covered up. Yeah. Um, and uh, I spend a lot of time uh, teaching people, reading about it, articles. So in my spare time, I don't listen to too many fitness podcasts because it's a bit like a busman's holiday. Yeah. But there are some ones out there that I'm a fan of. And it's more to do with the people that do them as opposed to any new dazzling insights into fitness and diet. Um, however, if I do want something that's quite cutting edge um, and new science based, there's a, a chap called Ben Greenfield who's got uh, a podcast. I think it's called the Ben Greenfield podcast or something like that and he is a uh, he terms himself as a biohacker um, and a biohacker is someone that's looking for shortcuts to have a sort of minimum effort for maximum effect so the best way to train you know what's the minimum effective dose which is something I'll get onto later what's the least you can do for the most amount of benefit what are the best foods to eat to give you the most amount of of nutrients um, and so he's interesting and he's a great self experimenter so he'll sort of do all sorts of things to himself in the names of science and trying to prove his stuff um, I'm selective with his stuff I don't listen to it every week um, but that's one of my fitness ones I'm gonna keep going the fitness one that's and that's called the Ben Greenfield the Ben Greenfield fitness podcast thing if I can yeah. I will try and put links to these down below but we use I use Podcast Republic app. You use iTunes. Do yeah, you? whatever's on the phone. So I'll, I don't know if I can find those on an actual computer, yeah. but I'll I'll try. Um, and then the two other ones I listen to are quite closely related. There's one I listen to called Starting Strength, uh, which I think might be Mark my... Ripito. <laughs> you love Mark Ripito. I really do. Mark <laughs> Ripito is uh, like a 62, 63 year old Texan, um, and. Uh, he's as strongly opinionated as you'd expect him to be, a cantankerous old bastard. And he, uh, the way that he teaches the basic lifts is how I teach the basic lifts. Um, and I am very heavily influenced by him and his methods. So everything I do towards my clients has got, at least in part, something to do with Mark Ripperton's uh, teachings. But his podcast is great because he's just got one of the best voices for radio ever. Yeah. Um, and uh, he, he talks about fitness in a very low, um, I'm going 
want to say a nasty word, bullshit sort of way. Um, he doesn't faff around, he sort of says it as he sees it. And whether you agree with him or not, you definitely know what his opinion is. And then a spin-off from that, a guy that used to work for him has got his own podcast and fitness company called Barbell Logic. They go for a deeper dive into the trainings for uh, strength uh, and conditioning. Um, but it's broadly the same sort of thing. But out of those three, my favourite, Mark Rippert's of Starting Strength. So that's the name of his podcast. And the other one is Barbell... Barbell Logic. Barbell Logic. A bit of a deeper dive for the guys that are into uh, their strength training um, and sort of want to take to the next level. He's got a very interesting take on something I've been interested in forever, which is the minimum effective dose. What's the smallest change you can make to your current lifestyle to have the biggest net benefit? Yeah. Uh, and for most people, I would say strength training. Just do that. Yeah. Okay, my next one, um, I was watching Amy of the Stranded podcast this morning and she reminded me about cabin pressure. <laughs> if any of you are British, I don't know how far cabin pressure got abroad, but it's Not a sure. BBC Radio 4 comedy, what's the radio equivalent of a sitcom? Well, it's a sitcom. It's still. a sitcom, but on the radio. Yeah. Um, and it... They stopped making it quite a few years ago, but it's an absolute classic. And it's a comedy set in a private chartered aircraft. And it's about the crew that run it and the scrapes and the mishaps they get into. And it is achingly laugh out loud funny. If a dog barks, that's because the postman's coming. Um, and it stars Benedict Cumberbatch. He's leaving his parcel. <laughs> oh, it stars Benedict Cumberbatch, John Finnamore, who's the writer, Stephanie Cole, mm -hmm. and somebody else. Oh, I mentioned his name earlier on. John Finnamore, Stephanie Cole, Benedict Cumberbatch. Great British actor. The older chap. The older chap. Uh, I can't remember his name, but yeah. anyway. So it's not on the radio at the moment, but I think you can buy it from iTunes. Um, and possibly through Audible as well. So I'm definitely going to treat myself to cabin pressure. Um, and they, Jim, John Finnamore, who was the writer, has also done a spin-off and he's doing daily vlogs on YouTube called Cabin Fever. And it's as his character, which is Martin, isn't it, in Cabin Pressure? He's an idiot. I haven't started um, watching those yet, but that's my plan for my knitting break this afternoon. So definitely cabin pressure. Yeah, genuinely crush your car fire. Yeah. <laughs> You might have to come so, with a warning for when you yeah, listen to it. <laughs> What's next on yours? Um, next, again, I've got a, a sort of combo one. This is a, a two for one deal here because they're both done by the same chap. Um, there's a uh, American film director and maker called Kevin Smith. Oh, uh, yeah, who, Chasing Amy. Chasing Amy. Clerk, More rats. Clerks was his sort of famous film that sort of made him, and he's done a ton of stuff. And he is a. Definitely an original thinker, but also he's a true independent filmmaker. Um, he, he did make it big and did do some bigger budget films for uh, large studios, but at his heart he's an indie filmmaker. And he was one of the first people to get into podcasting. Like in the early days of podcasting, it was him, uh, Adam Carolla, Joe Rogan, uh, to name but a few. But I think Kevin Smith was about second or third person to ever get a podcast. And he's got about five or six podcasts that he does on a weekly basis. How many? Yeah, he's an animal. He's, he's an absolute He's machine. got a lot to talk about, that man. He will not shut up. <laughs> um, but uh, the two I really like. Um, one is uh, called Hollywood Babylon, which is just hilarious. It's very formulaic. It's the same each week, but it's done in front of a live audience. And there's Kevin Smith, who basically plays the straight man, although stoned off his gourd. And uh, then uh, he's got Ralph Garman, who's uh, an actor, radio presenter, and a voiceover guy. And he does great impressions. And the show is about an hour, hour and 20 minutes long. And it follows a very formulaic um, structure, but it's hilarious. What's it actually about? <laughs> uh, well, it's loosely based around all things Hollywood. So Hollywood news. Oh, okay. Films. Um, People doing stupid things in Hollywood, <laughs> famous people dying in Hollywood, um, but 
loosely um, and it's just the banter between the two of them and the interaction with a live studio audience. Um, so think of it as like a game panel show but there's no game to it but very very good. Um, so that one I enjoy very much. Hollywood Babylon. Hollywood Babylon. Babble on. So it's not oh, Babylon. Okay. Hollywood Babble. Yeah. Babble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you okay. I see what you did there. Ah, well, really? they did that. And then uh, <laughs> another one that Kevin Smith does with uh, his writer friend, a guy called Mark Bernardin, um, is also live, um, although it didn't start that way. And they do it in a Star Wars themed pub slash bar oh, in Hollywood. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a Star Wars thing. It's called Fat Man Beyond. Um, and, <laughs> right. and it's just a geek culture podcast. Um, Mark's a writer, and obviously Kevin Smith is a director and a maker of pop culture. And they are huge fans of the genre as well. And so they just get together, again, in front of a live studio audience, which makes it uh, just a lot more lively. And they talk about things related to pop culture. So comic books, movies, TV shows. Uh, and it's highly irreverent, very rude at times. It's just hilarious. So that one I like. And it's a good way to keep up on uh, geek culture, which I'm a huge fan of as well. Yeah. So, yeah, those are my next two for ones, um, both by Kevin Smith. One is called Hollywood Babble On. And the other one is called Fat Man Beyond. Okay, very good. Excellent. Um, mine is another BBC Radio 4 recommendation. Every, well, I think actually it's every weekday at 6.30 on BBC Radio 4, there is a comedy show. Um, and there's different, um, different ones on different days of the week with their own series and things like that. And you can get, you can download an app, which is... Friday Night Comedy from BBC Radio 4 um, and the Friday night slot is absolutely the best one at half past six that's the really that's the top slot isn't it and that covers um, the news quiz I'm sorry I haven't a clue it does dead ringers it does dead of. ringers but I, I don't find that terribly funny um, so that that varies and if you get the Friday Night Comedy app you'll just get whatever is current at the moment my absolute favourite is the news quiz. Oh, really? Um, for me, it's sorry I haven't a clue. Oh, well, I'm torn because Jenny and I went to see I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue live. And you nearly this, died. I nearly died. You nearly died. I nearly died. Honest to God. For, I think it was for Christmas. Jenny was going with her mum and asked if I'd like a ticket for my Christmas present, and I said yes. And if you give the, the St David's Centre in Cardiff is just a big auditorium and there's concerts and plays, so it's it's a massive venue. And when we went in, we were all given a kazoo, and I just knew, I just knew. Anyway, um, I'm sorry I haven't a clue is another good one, but my absolute favourite is the news quiz. So obviously topical events, um, mostly, I'd say it's about 90% UK focused, um, but they cover all sorts of silly things. Um, and that one has its own extended version with its own podcast, and that's called the News Quiz Extra. So the show is usually half an hour, and the News Quiz Extra takes it up to about 45 minutes. And they have um, a host and then four participants, two teams of two. And those participants vary, although there are a good few regulars. Um, Susan Kalman, Lucy Porter... Who else comes on a lot? Jeremy Hardy is my favourite, unfortunately yeah. has passed away. But yeah, and they get, um, there's a lovely American comedian lady whose name I can never remember, but they do get, you know, a good rotation of comedians through. Um, so that's always good fun. And it's just them doing skits on the week's news. Loosely quiz Loosely formula. quiz formula, although nobody, this point system seems to be arbitrary. Pretty, pretty, yeah, just guidelines really. Yeah. So that's another cracker. Um, yeah, what's your next one? Um, my next one's a, a newish one for me. Um, so when I was a kid back in the 1980s, uh, we moved to Brazil in 1980. Uh, I was 10 years old. And um, I made friends, went, I went to an American school. Although I was in Brazil, I went to an American school. 
and so my friends uh, at the time were Americans and um, one Canadian and they played Dungeons and Dragons and it was them that got me into Dungeons and Dragons and uh, I played it from 1981, give or take, straight through until I left school in 1987 uh, and it was a really big part of my life and it was just loads of fun. Uh, I started off playing it and then eventually I bought all the books and I became the person that starts to lead the story, which is called the Dungeon Master. Um, and I stopped playing it in 1987 and we started again in 2019 as a family. One of my personal training clients, Pete, um, I was just chatting to him during one of our sessions and he was looking, it was a Monday morning and he was looking rough. And I was like, oh, what happened to you on the weekend? Well, it turns out he'd had all of his mates over for a massive Dungeons and Dragons slash curry slash frightening amounts of alcohol. And <laughs> he was still feeling the effects. So I started chatting to him about it. Mentioned it to Dave because I knew that Dave used to play as a child. And um, and now we will play Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, and it's, um, it's a classic take. I mean, it's been around forever, but it, it's a classic take on get around a table as a family and play a board game. Mm -hmm. Except Dungeons & Dragons is not a board game. It's done by mainly imagination play. Um, and then the probability is of what happens is based on the roll of a dice. And it sounds complicated and Zoe does really? struggle. <laughs> Shut up, I'm learning. <laughs> You're so bad, You're so bad. Um, roll the six, the other six. No, the dice with six sides in it. There's no, that's so the... many dice and they all have a different number of sides on them. Yeah, but the six-sided dice, that's the normal dice that you use in every <laughs> game anyway. Um, but uh, it's lots of fun and it's a great opportunity for the family to have two hours together, at least, sometimes even longer. And we're doing a thing together and it's odd what comes out. What I like is that the way the game works is the characters play as a team. I have zero competitive spirit. I couldn't give a toss if I'm better than anybody else. I'm not interested in beating someone or winning. I just like the taking part. It drives him spare. He's the most competitive man in the planet. So, I mean, our kids are basically 16, 14, and nearly 13. Um, and they have varying degrees of competitive natures as well. But all being on the same team, we're not pitted against each other. No, you're we're all me, working basically. together. Um, and you know, Dave is the dungeon master who comes up with it. So I really like that it's collaborative and yeah. not about beating each other because yeah. if you're playing it as a family and you've got slightly younger kids, you just don't want, you want someone, you want everyone to enjoy it and you don't want someone in sobs at the end. Yeah, so. <laughs> that might be me. Yes. <laughs> it's just too much it, math. It, it is oddly emotional though. <laughs> um, I, recently there was a, a culmination to a big event um, and uh, Joss, who killed the dragon, yeah, she did. was actually in tears at the end. Yeah, of it. she was absolutely yeah. thrilled. It'd been it's a big build cool. up. She did really well. So, um, anyway, so Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. Um, there is a Dungeons and Dragons, there's four million Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> podcasts yeah. uh, because it really suits a podcast formula, which is press record on a device and then for hours people just talk. Um, but they come in varying degrees of. Quality. Yeah, quality. <laughs> and the best um, for me personally is one called Critical Role, yeah. um, which is a. Oh, how many is there of them? I think there's one, two, three. There's six or seven professional actor slash voice actors um, based in LA, um, and they, these guys are the highest quality. You know, all the anime movies that you might have ever watched that's been translated from Japanese. All the video games that you've ever played, these guys have played a part in that, mm -hmm. as well as doing TV and movie stuff anyway. So they're top draw actors and they are fantastic voice actors. Um, and so the level of role play that they bring to their parts mm -hmm. is absolutely fantastic and they stay in character um, throughout the entire thing. Mm -hmm. And so Critical Role is a Dungeons and Dragons campaign that the current one is over two years long and each week um, they put out a three to four hour episode of a bunch of mates around a table playing Dungeons and Dragons and it's funny and it's emotional 
and and the stories are really good. The stories so are really you get good. caught up in it. And don't yeah. they have a YouTube? Don't they film it and put it on YouTube, or is that just absolutely? The live? Yeah, they do that as well. Yeah, live shows. No, yeah, they do live shows, but all of their um, episodes get uploaded onto YouTube also. Oh, so they do both. So it's yes. the same thing, but in two places. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So uh, critical role um, for your Dungeons and Dragons needs. Oh, there you go. My last one is actually another BBC recommendation. I love the BBC. I don't mind paying my licence fee. I pay my licence fee just for BBC Radio 4. Um, but anyway, the main BBC radio app is called BBC Sounds. Um, so you can listen live to the radio through it, or you can go back and find particular shows if you're after Moneybox or Woman's Hour, whatever you like. Um, but they do have a lot of audio books on there. Um, so if you go into the app, click on the search function, it brings up lots of categories like comedy, drama, history, health, that kind of thing. Click on the audio books link and there is so much good stuff in there. I just had a... If you... Because I've got more stuff to add to this. Um, so rather than me talking for the next half hour after you finish this, if you give one book recommendation and then come back to me. But I've got lots. Yeah, so have I. But I'm just going to just say the thing. I'm not going to talk about them. You're not the boss of me. Well, look, right, so if you look in the audio book section, I've, loads of audio I've books, I've, stuff I've, that I've earmarked that I want to listen to. They've got Hilary Mantel's book, The Mirror and the Light. They've got The 39 Steps by John, is it Buchan? B-U-C-H-A-N? Buchan? Buchan. Um, and I'm a massive fan of Sherlock Holmes, and they've got The Sign of the Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So I will be listening to those. Okay, strap in. It's going to take God. a while. <laughs> Bear in mind we're at 21 minutes already. Right, so I've not even covered podcasts, let alone audiobooks. Um, so I'll go through these quick. Um, there's one which is just, again, hilarious. Uh, it's called... You're smiling just thinking about it. <laughs> it's called My Dad Wrote a Porno. Oh, I've been meaning to listen to that. And it's literally what it says in the tin. Um, a guy finds out, a young man, I'm guessing his 20s, 30s, finds out that his father, now in his 70s, has wrote a porno. And it's terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely the worst version of erotic literature you could ever find. And so him and a bunch of his friends, I think two other friends, mm -hmm. sit around a table and they read it out loud. Oh, I don't know if I could listen to it. That would just be excruciating. So you're getting this interesting insight into what you're Dad. Or is it not just so <laughs> curlingly awful? Uh, it is, it is <laughs> cringingly embarrassing, oh. uh, but absolutely hilariously funny. So you've got his aged dad's take on what is erotic, um, oh and <laughs> read just... by his son. Ooh. And the, oh, it's <laughs> it's it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and so that's well, the book itself, the actual porno would be hilarious because it's so bad, but then read by his son and two of his friends who are just corpsing, laughing at times, uh, is absolutely brilliant. So that's one. Another one I listen to fairly regularly is the Commode and Mayo Film Review. Okay, Commode and Mayo Film Review. Um, two radio DJs, one who happens to be a, uh, a film reviewer. Um, that's Mark Kermode, Mark Kermode. And Simon Mayo. A Simon Commode Mayo. is a... Accessories for your bathroom. What else? Kerr mode. Kerr mode. <laughs> uh, and uh, they've, they, they've been doing this film review thing on Radio 1 initially and then Radio 2 and I think now it's on Radio 5 Live uh, for decades. Um, but it's over the years morphed into what has now become a, a podcast. It's still on the radio but it's a, a half hour program. Whereas the, maybe it's an hour, but um, the podcast is about two hours long. And there's lots of banter between the two of these grump, two grumpy old men uh, who are professionals. So it's at a very, very high level. It's done by the BBC. So again, it's very high production values. Uh, Mark is an excellent film reviewer. So you're getting very interesting insight into movies, which uh, we're both fans of. Um, but really, it's the in-jokes. Yeah. Um, so they call it the the Witterverse, and it's Wittertainment. And it's just a banter between the two, and the in-jokes of the audience, 
uh, sort of just make it feel as if you're sort of part of this little family. So I recommend that one very much. And finally, from a uh, podcast point of view, he's my absolute favourite because he's my best friend, is uh, Joe Rogan. Um, if Dave so, ever leaves me, it will be for Joe Rogan. It's possible. <laughs> um, so the Joe Rogan podcast, he unfairly gets labelled as a, a right-wing meathead um, yeah. by a lot of people. But, I mean, he's definitely meathead. Definitely a meathead. Um, but he's as left as it gets, really, on every single thing, except he has guns. But it's America, so everyone's got guns. Everyone and their mums. <laughs> farmers' mums. Farmers. <laughs> farmers' mums. Anyway. Joe Rogan podcast. What makes him so good is it's it's long form entertainment. So it's two to three hours long conversation with one other person, and because he is the top of the heap from when it comes to podcasters, he gets to pick and choose the best of the best. So he gets very interesting people to chat to, um, and so one podcast might be a astrophysicist talking about quarks whatever they are and then the next one might be a cage fighter talking about getting punched in the face and then the next one might be an author or a film director um he tends not to go for famous famous people who are just on the tour uh promoting their latest whatever it's people that interest him and some of it is quite topical as well some of it's topical uh, some of it is hilarious he gets a lot of just comedian friends on and they just take the mickey out of each other and get drunk and stoned for a couple of hours together so some of it is daft um he's definitely meathead but then so am i um and yeah joe rogan's my absolute favorite one and that's called the joe rogan podcast the joe rogan experience joe rogan experience but it's like number one in podcast and that has been for a, probably a decade now um the only thing i was going to talk about was audible so why don't you talk about audible first and do you use this and what are you listening to? What have you listened to on Audible? I'm sure you all know what Audible is. It's the Amazon audiobook delivery app, app I suppose, yeah. is the answer to that. Um, I don't use it as much as I used to, simply because I've got more into watching podcasts and things. Um, and it's not that cheap, actually. Um... So I'm a little bit reluctant to part with cash because we don't have a huge amount. I'm sure nobody has a huge amount at the moment. What? So when I choose an audiobook, I look at how long it takes to listen to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I've got you know quite a few books in there. And the ones that I re-listen to the most often tends to be the Tom Clancy. I love, when it comes to films i absolutely love explodey action adventure that's my absolute favorite the stupider the better i do not want to be challenged by a film i really really don't i don't like romantic comedies anything that i've got to read subtitles means i can't knit so much science fiction hates. science fiction oh god I'm not saying it's aliens but it's aliens yeah. um it's just lazy anyway the point is when it comes to audiobooks i look for bang for my buck um, so I really enjoy Tom Clancy novel audiobooks, um, whether it's the Rainbow Six series or whether it's the John Ryan ones. Um, Jack Ryan. Jack, Jack, Ryan. Jack Ryan, thank you. Um, big fan, I think so. Big, big fan. fan, terrible memory. And the other ones I like are the Harry Dresden series, which is written by Jim Butcher. Ha! Remembered it? Um, John Butcher. Jim Butcher. Yes. Oh, you absolute git. Um, and when I describe them, they, you might think they sound silly. Oh, they are. They are silly. I'll give you that. Basically, it's all set in Chicago, and the, the main character is Harry Dresden, and he is the only professional wizard listed in whatever the American equivalent of the Yellow Pages is. Um, and it turns out that there's a massive, lesser-known subculture of fantastical creatures, you know, vampires, werewolves, shenanigans... Um, and it's, it basically it follows his character and the scrapes he gets into. And um, the books are fantastic. The audiobooks are brilliant, and they are my favourites to re listen to. I because I have a terrible memory and a reluctance to spend money on certain things. Um, I do re read and re listen to a lot of the same things. I'm more likely to re listen or re read something than I am to buy a new one. I might be tempted if it's the same author or if it's the next one in a series 
I've already started, I'm fine with it, but yeah, I do re-listen to a lot of things. The, um, the Jim Butcher books uh, are a bit like if Harry Potter was rewritten as hard-boiled crime fiction. Yes, that's true. Except Harry Potter is now grown up uh, and a sort of badass. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're good, they're fun. I've they're read a couple books. of the books. Um, so, Audible for me. Like Zoe, um, I tend to listen to um, podcasts more uh, than I do uh, books. And we're both big readers anyway. Mm. So we're both normally uh, end the evening by reading a sentence and then falling asleep in a book. <laughs> um, but this is what I'm listening to right now. Um, so I'm listening to something called The Final Empire uh, by an author called Brandon Sanderson. Uh, and it's a very clever take on the fantasy genre. And the, the premise of this series of books, and he's written quite a few in this series, is what if the Dark Lord won? So think of the cl classic Lord of the Rings trope, where you've got the bad guy and you've got all the good people that are railed against him, and the good guys fight the bad guy and win. What if the bad guy won and then ruled the Earth for a thousand years? What would happen then? Um, and it's almost, it's almost teen fiction, but it's, it's not YA stuff, it really isn't, but it's kind of nearly there. I think it's because it's written quite straight, there's no swearing, there's no real sex in it. Um, it it's quite chaste, but the story is fantastic. And what Brandon Sanderson is very good at is coming up with magic systems that almost you feel could work because it's based on a little bit of real world physics um great storyline lots of twists to it uh couldn't recommend those highly enough i'm also listening to sapiens uh, by yuval noah harari i know uh, and that is uh basically the history of the human race and why we are what we are and why we do what we do um, so like from an anthropological point of view? Definitely. Historical mm. biology. Okay, I guess you that's could describe anthropology, it. yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it's like there's an actual word for it. I know. Um, but very interesting. Um, and it, it even, it doesn't talk about epidemics or coronavirus, obviously, it was written a few years ago. But a lot of behaviour that is sort of going on now, you could re I'm re listening to Sapiens going, uh, okay, that explains <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Um, one last one. Okay, just getting one last one. Um, we could do another I'm, one another time. I'm going to go for Why We Sleep um, by Matthew Walker, and it's the science of sleep and why we do need to sleep between six and eight hours a day every day. Where you think about it from a survival point of view, being asleep when a lot of nocturnal predators are out hunting. Um, would be, from a survival point of view... Massive disadvantage. Massive disadvantage. And why sleep is so important, the science of sleep, and what happens when you don't get enough, and who does. Um, although, at the moment, <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah. But normally... He can't go more than two days without having a nap. I don't know what's um, going on. He turns back for a minute, and he's fast asleep on the sofa with the dog. Yeah, well, you know, it's nice. Um, and so that's really interesting. Um why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. One last one. Player Games by Ian M. Banks. Uh, he wrote straight contemporary fiction, but he's also got a sci-fi arm to him as well. And it's highbrow, intelligent science fiction. For even, even people that don't like science fiction, she'd like it as well. Because it's not about the science fiction. It's about big ideas and concepts in a framework of sci-fi. In it's, space. No. Okay, there. Um, and there you go. Those are my audible picks. Um, and that's it, because yeah. we're at 34 and a bit minutes. There we go. Right, I will try and link to all of those things down below. If I can't find links, I'll certainly just write out all the titles so that you can try and find them. Mm -hmm. um, let us know if you enjoyed this. This is a bit of a random one. Um, if you did, we can do another one. If you, if didn't, you didn't, we promise never to we'll do We'll probably again. do another one anyway, because we enjoyed it. And you know, it's easy. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up. 
subscribe like, and like subscribe. and clicky and all of yeah. the stuff. Buy us a coffee, please. Yes, thank you. Lots of people have bought me a coffee, which is lovely. Thank you, lovely people. Buy me one. I spent some of the coffee money that I was given on some needle felting needles for Jocelyn because she broke all of hers and she wants to do some more needle felting, which none of the gym people will care about. Anyway, look after yourselves and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye-bye.